how to get feedback from uh, from experts from people who are you know close to your field but not so close to your context um, because that that can be uh, incredibly helpful right yeah and also the idea of good feedback and bad feedback and how can you recognize good feedback if you should pivot on the idea that you have on what that prototype is do you bring that in and iterate on it and and at this point the students have got feedback from each other feedback from Rashan and I and tonight I was just telling them uh, Lucy and Lucy's students that we want to broaden that feedback audience so they're getting um, feedback from students at a different university and from you as well Excellent. Do you want me to give you a little bit of an overview of our end of things? Would that be helpful? Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. My name is. Yeah. What? Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Lucy Gray, and I am an Apple Distinguished Educator with Rashan, and I have also worked with Don on a few projects, most notably a, a workshop a few weeks ago on designing global uh, experiences, and um, I've been inspired in, and I'm teaching my first online course here. Um, at National Lewis University, which is based in Chicago. There's probably four or five campuses in the Chicago area with a main um, campus. Is, it, it's located right across from the Art Institute, if you've ever been to Chicago. And uh, but this course meets online. Um, and actually, we technically don't have any synchronous time together. It's all virtual and asynchronous. But I really feel like the synchronous piece is really important. And so um, taking a cue from you, from Rashan and Don, I've tried to bring the outside into this course and set up um, um, webinars with various experts to kind of inform our ideas around professional development. This class is completely focused on, on staff development and it's within a technology and education program. So most of my students, there are a ton of them, but not all are in the tech and ed program. Irene um, is actually, I think, in curriculum instruction. She's one of the students that's present right now. So some of them know each other, some of them don't, um, but it's been you know, a completely virtual experience. These, these sessions that we've had, these webinar sessions have been fabulous. We've had uh, Mike Muir, who's head of the MLTI program in Maine. We've had um, three other ADEs, uh, Carolyn Skiba, uh, Kristen, Christine DiPaolo, and um, um, oh, Kurt Kleinen, and uh, a few other people come in and talk to us. Last week was uh, a woman from a platform called Chrome Warrior, which does gamification for professional development. And we use that, I also do some work with a conference in California called Q, and we use that to gamify um, the Q conference. So we, we learned about that in our last session. The whole point of these is that they're going to be designing a professional development experience at the end of this, of this um, quarter. And they're probably already starting to kind of work on it and these webinars have been kind of uh, inspirational, you know, to give them ideas for how they might be creative with this benchmark project. The other alternative they have is they can design a professional development experience on makerspaces using your work tonight as inspiration. So um, we'll see how, how they all peter out and, and, and who chooses what. I think they'll probably choose to do um, professional development experiences for their own institutions that they'll, that they'll they'll implement at some point, but um, who knows, maybe they'll come up with a maker one instead. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Um, all of my students are, are in various worlds in their schools. One of them is, uh, who I don't think can be here tonight because it's his school's talent show, and is Corey Homer, who um, it was a ISTE Young Educator of the Year a couple years ago. Um, Rashawn, you may have run into him. He's also done some training for Apple Professional Development or Apple professional learning and he's a tech coach at Lake Forest High School which is my alma mater um, and then we have you know and then we have somebody like Irene in, in here is um, she does cultural awareness um, uh, programs with kids and after-school programs in Chicago public schools so she's kind of coming from a business perspective almost and um, but I think she's learned a lot from from how she can design staff development um, for her, her, her employees uh, we also have tonight, we have Lori, who's an eighth grade, I think eighth grade math teacher uh, in the suburbs of Chicago, and who else do we have? We have Brianna as well. So we've got a few people here. This is mandatory for them to come, so hopefully a few more will drop in. I know some are coming, are just coming home from school in Chicago because we're an hour 
uh, earlier than you are, uh, so more people will join in. Uh, my question for you guys is, how do we want to do the feedback mechanism? We do have a group chat, um, which you can open up if you click on the chat button at the bottom of the screen, um, but that will be hard for people to see unless they want to join on their own device. I've al I also have the document open where we did our planning, and we could add notes there. How would you, how would you like your feedback delivered? We haven't really thought about this. So, yes, um, we can improvise and innovate. I think you know, we can say yes to all. Certainly people could, after each group um, does their share, we can, of course, do voice, you know, synchronous feedback or questions. Uh, but as things are going or people prefer to compose their thoughts um, text-wise, I think the Zoom chat window is fine. And I'll, I'll open up the, uh, the Google Doc on my iPad so I can just scan it to see if any questions pop up. And your students can also go in there and take a look at, at that doc too. I think they have they have this doc as well, right? I think I linked it on the Canvas page, but it might yeah. be set to view only for, for us. So uh, they at least can see it, but it, it, it's there too. So yeah, okay. We'll in all, and you know, if people can feel free to pipe in if it seems that their comments or questions uh, were not noticed by us. We, we can we can resolve that. I'm sure. So, so I suggest that we we do the presentations. Everybody asks a few questions, and then your, your class included too, because. Some of your teams may not have known about know about the other team's work, uh, and then we'll we'll go to the feedback piece. Don, do you specifically have any tips for giving good feedback versus not so great feedback? Um, no, other than you should react to what you see and hear. Okay, that's what we want. I right. think we can handle that. We can do that. And what, what's that, that framework like? You know, well, like we, I, I like. Yeah, we could. I mean, you see, we could do our favorite forced feedback. I like, I wish, what if. Okay. That we used with the Dawson School last yeah. week. So yeah. we, we can do that one. That might be actually given the online nature, maybe that might be a good structured one. So what, what were the three things I wonder, I like, I wish? I, yeah. I like. I wish. I wish. What and, if? And what if? And I'll write those. Here. Okay. I, I like can be something you know obviously positive. I wish is a more gentle way of saying something I didn't like. And, <laughs> and then um, and then what if is you know a more generative way to, to pivot something or or make a you know, constructive suggestion. Yeah, constructive or something that would provoke thought uh, into adding some new feature to whatever that thing is. Oops, I think you got muted there. We'll see. Sorry, I've been muting. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention too is that we have not really covered. I meant to give everybody some readings on makerspaces before this, and I did not do that because I've been too swamped with things. Um, so I'm not sure what everyone's background is with makerspaces. It's a little different here in Chicago than it is in New York. I'm not in Chicago right now. I'm in Texas, but in Chicago where everybody is. Um, uh, makerspaces are starting to catch on in schools. There's some phenomenal schools. I'll, pu I'll put some links in the chat for you guys. Um, Winneka Public Schools here um, has an amazing librarian in one of their schools that I, I, I've unbelievable stuff. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Um, and, and slowly he's been working with his other colleagues at there are three other elementary and junior highs to, to do some amazing stuff. But um, they're, they're kind of growing in schools, but you don't see, what I've noticed in New York when I visited is that there's kind of maker-like public places for, for not just students uh, in schools, but for everyone who's a maker. And in here, you don't really see that in Chicago so much, but it's starting to happen. And Corey, one of our students, uh, pointed to one called Hacker Space or Hacker Something in Evanston, which is, a, is an open um, you know, space where they're doing all sorts of things in classes for kids and that sort of thing. So I'll find the link for that. But my students, their, their background knowledge on, on Maker in general, um, they may need a, a little, you know, don't feel like you're dumbing down for us, but, um, but they may need a little bit of background knowledge just as a heads up. Okay, so you know what I'll do, because you know, I, I want to get our groups started. So it sounds like we'll just do all four groups back to back and then we can open up to feedback. And I know, Jen, you have to go, so you have to go, that's fine. But your group will still go first. Um, but uh, so to give con additional context to what was written as far as the two cases, you know, 
like Lucy said, we've been, you know, seeing the maker space, maker culture, whether it's in parallel interest or technical expertise often fall um, towards leaders in ed tech as far as, you know, setting, setting the agenda. And to a degree, you know, similar way that like 10 years ago, the way people were looking at laptops iPads, whatever, and just trying to like lay it on or add on to existing stuff. Uh, I think more recently, a similar trend uh, as maker interest has you know come about is like, well, how do you incorporate um, you know physical you know construction of, of of stuff and you know almost some some degree engineering and uh, working with physical materials as a way for demonstrating understanding or just you know to follow one of the the like a learning paradigm of, of more constructionist and not constructivist, but actual uh, constructionist learning um, realized through, through maker movement. So the task, you know, obviously that's a very short version of it, but the task was that um, as, as a leader, uh, the, one of the cases was to try to come up with some way um, to hopefully address this history teacher who was teaching, you know, ancient Roman architecture uh, and try to innovate or ask good questions around um, some sort of unit that might uh, help to leverage uh, a maker space or pilot something interesting. And so three of the four groups approach that challenge. And then the fourth group approach something which is totally in a separate um, domain, which is just around uh, the experience of, of working within multiple systems as a student these days. So that's my, my introduction of, of the context. Uh, I won't burden the students with having to explain certain things, so there might be some gaps or like terms used. Uh, feel free to include those in your questions. You're like, oh, what's a laser cutter? Um, you know, we can revert back to that after. So. Uh, Great, we're ready. We're ready when you guys are. This is going to be really cool. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, first, uh, first group. Um, I told we can sit here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna whip, open up to their presentation. Oh, here's my email. Uh, uh, which is your groups? One, uh, that, the one you just had. Yeah. Close my Gmail for now. I'm going to go share screen. This one. All right. Can you see something that's, uh, that's a Google slide presentation visible? Great. Thumbs up. Confirm. Yes. Did you guys want it in the present view? Uh, yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, yeah, so we lost, you know, when I went into full screen mode, it, uh, we lost our Zoom window, but that's okay. Lucy, can you just verbally confirm that you can see? Yeah, that? we can see fine. If you mouse up to the top of the screen, too, you can also get out of full screen if you don't want to, if you want to be able to get to other windows. So uh, if you mouse awesome. over, you'll see view options. Look at that. Wait, how did that work? That was like, like that for a second. Uh, okay, but I'll press this anyway. Uh, you guys can sit here. The camera is here, so it'll be good to look I'm at them. First two pages. All right, nice. And you can all sit. Just, just get comfortable. All right, here we go. Um, I'm going to present it again. Hi. I really should probably go to Texas. <laughs> um, oh, so we chose option one as did three other groups. We are presenting. Um, we are working with a group of 10th graders. Um, we're group one. I'm Jenny. You can see there's Anne, Grace, Jessica, and you behind me. Um, we'll just start right in here. Our goal was to use uh, makerspace culture to develop a STEAM project. So not just keeping it, trying to innovate and uh, energize the traditional history project of studying ancient Rome by uh, infusing it with technology, engineering, art, mathematics, and science. Um, we have 20 students, four groups of five, and the teacher is, uh, the goal is to divide the students up by skills and learning abilities so that they're well balanced. And each group is assigned a particular structure, which my colleagues will discuss afterwards. Um, the project is divided into four weeks. The first week is a week of research. We would probably open it up with um, a design thinking experience, something like, you know, the marshmallows and the toothpicks or something to get the kids working together to collaborate and um, loosen up and become comfortable with one another. Uh, then they would research their particular architectural structure. 
the second week, um, they would all work collaboratively. They would have a homework assignment for the second week, which would be to start planning the design of their uh, architectural structure. And then week two is they begin construction. Week, week three is fine tuning and more construction. And week four, they would present to their uh, other students and then ultimately <clears throat> to their whole grade. So that is my part. And I'm going to pass this on to Jessica. Jessica. Um, should I sit right there? Yeah, you're yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Super close. To the <laughs> yes. So these are the materials that. engineering software that's designed for students. Thank you. A laser cutter. Um, holler in if you don't know what that is. A 3D printer, some cardboard, PVC tubing, wood, paper mache, paint, and other art supplies. So I just click. Yep, down uh, the uh, arrow right. on the right. Thanks. Okay. Um, and these are the four architecture elements that are, will be assigned to each group. Um, the Colosseum, the Trevi Fountain, the Pantheon, and the Forum. And some Hessian along. Who's next? Yes. next? And one of the striking features of the Roman city is uh, the city full of uh, water fountains. And we can use this to teach students about like general physics like uh we can pose the question like why a fountain can run without electricity and uh because the whole roman city is feed by a uh, water um through a system called aqueduct and all water flowed to the city by gravity and we can connect the the concept that we can teach by using uh by using this uh, maker space is to teach their pressure and the liquid pressure and the communicating vessels. And we can see uh, the uh, this GI uh, this GIF picture, uh, like the water flows. It resembles the how how the Roman city has been fed because uh, it's fed by a reservoir that is on on the hills and can create the water pressure that can. Um, can generate, can help the water fountain to generate a certain height. So basically, um, as Jennifer elaborated before, the goal of this is that students would be able to build a structure based on what they discovered based on their research and then they're assigned to build these certain things. So I'm gonna talk about a little of the implications that might um, affect the learning process. So I think some variables that might um, imp uh, impact whether or not the students actually learn a lot is whether the teacher can um, structure the, guide, um, the research process, especially in terms of what they're studying and the whole design and construction. And also keeping a list of the weekly goals and keeping each group on task, holding them accountable to um, meeting the deadlines each week. It'll be very important, especially in a four-week um, project timeline. And lastly, um, as these are 10th grade students, they're hopefully expected to understand the basic construction um, understanding, but also like some students come from different backgrounds. So the difficulty and the ease of actually executing the model will um, say a lot of the students' grade. So that's the And I will close this up. And uh, our conclusion is, uh, during these four weeks, the students will have be able to research the different buildings in ancient Rome and how it relates to STEAM some skills. Uh, and also during this progress, students are involved in different situations. And in those kind of different situations, students are have the students having the opportunity to practice their other skills like teamwork skills and research skills and also it also involves different subjects like art, science, physics, uh, and so they also have this opportunity to have a, to get to know different kinds of subjects. And 
um, the only hard part we believe is the measurement of each student's learning results because this, the aim of this four weeks is the teacher wants to uh, make sure whether the students have learned uh, the different architecture of the Roman buildings. So the teacher, the educator really needs to focus during this progress and focus on um, like observation and questioning students whether they are understand and uh, help them to solve different problems um, or like teach them other skills to let themselves to solve the problems. Yes, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Terrific. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Okay, time for feedback. We have one more student that has joined us. We have Matt, and I'm gonna uh, review for Matt that we're going to give some um, feedback for people who, um, um, the, we're, we're using kind of the, the model of I like, I wish, and what if. And if you wanna grab the mic, you don't have to get on the video, but if you wanna grab the mic or if you wanna go into the chat, that's fine. Uh, but what's one thing that you like, one thing you wish, and um, and what's a suggestion as in what if, what if you tried this or what if you did that? That's kind of the format that we're using. So um, one person um, wrote that they, uh, in the notes already, um, that some, they, I'm not sure who, who wrote it, but somebody said that they liked the interdisciplinary thinking. Oh, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. So uh, I'll start because I, I, I have to model it for my students here, but I like how um, I liked how you had introductory activities that you you planned to to get the kids to feel comfortable, and you were planning to do some design thinking with the kids to to loosen them up and have them feel comfortable. I think that's a really important part of the learning process is getting people to feel comfortable in their space and and uh, you know connected to whatever you're going to study. Um, and then uh, I wish I wish there was a few more specifics, I guess, in, the, in, 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 in general. So for instance, um, and this kind of leads to my what if, like what if, you, um, what if you had the kids document their learning digitally as they were going? This is not the kind of activity that's going to be assessed by you know, standardized testing or, or, or formative assessing, assessment really, right? But like what if you had um, the students like, um, you know, keep a, a digital diary or, or re, you know, reflection piece on the stages as they built this and what they learned and that sort of thing. What if they took, I'm thinking about the technology piece of this, what if they took pictures and video of, what, of the process and, and you, know, wrote an, you know, wrote something up explaining what they were doing and what their thinking was. You know, that sort of thing I think would be really awesome. Um, so I'm going to turn this over to one of my students. Who wants to go next? Who wants to offer some uh, 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 I like, I wish, and what if? Anybody brave enough? Come on, I, Matt. Matt has some suggestions. Okay, so Irene has a question. Are all the students um, are the students all building aqueducts? That's her question. No, each student is building a different structure. So. One would be building the Colosseum. One group of students would be building the Colosseum. One group would be building the Forum. One would be building a fountain. And actually, I don't know that anyone's building an aqueduct. Um, it was, a Pantheon was the fourth structure. OK. So they're assigned, they're assigned the, 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 the structures. In this particular case, yeah, we okay. felt that it would be easier with only four weeks to assign. OK. Is there a reason that you didn't allow for any kind of choice, like, you know, scaffolded choice in this? Um, it just seemed like it was a very short, I think they only had an hour session. It's only four hours. Is okay. that making that up? It just seemed like it was such a brief amount of time, you know, that it would be easier to just assign. If they had more time, certainly that would be preferable. Okay. And then Matt is asking, uh, will, they all, will they all be in scale to each other? Ooh, interesting question. He's an art teacher. Interesting. I think it's how they design it, right? Yeah, I think that would be part of the STEAM. Yeah, I think that you would want it to be in scale, with relative scale. Um, and that would be a way they could work collaborati collaboratively in the four groups together. Or, or if not, if they're at different scales, like the, the meta challenge could be 
how do you arrange it on a table so you could take a photograph so that like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 use perspective uh, exactly uh, yeah 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 <laughs> okay uh anybody else uh my students come on let's have some uh i like let's use that format i like i wish and what if what would you offer for you know elaborating on this project anything that came to mind we can also you know people can put in their if they need more time to think and put comments in the chat window in the google doc and we can always revert back to it so uh we can also okay the next group start okay. the people all right so project one, um, let's we'll, we'll put that in the document, and then you guys can add stuff to group one, group one feedback. How about that? So, um, students, if you're feeling shy, go ahead and offer some feedback in um, in the document, and the other students will see that. That's great. Okay, next. That's great, and, and I really good job, everyone. Thank you. We'd love it. So the suggestion to document it is a great. It's a great suggestion. Yeah, and I'll read. Uh, uh, Irene's comments while the next group is, is oh, we don't know, let's do the next, uh, who is this group, the uh, ancient Roman history? Uh, okay, uh, Lucy, can you still see my the spy window? With the, uh, we can see it. Oh, wait, you share it, so I We would love to see the slides too. So if you have, um, you know, we can if we can look through the slides on our own as well. That would be great. Uh, if you want to put the link in the document at some point. Sure. I mean, you can see them right now, but you're just saying to go back and flip through. Yeah. Them. Yeah. But like, if they, if they have more questions, they want to flip through them while they're asking. When we get to the end. Uh, okay. Let me let me see. Are you guys okay with me sharing a link to the slides? Yeah. Oh. I'll figure out how to, how to do that while this group is. Uh, uh, all right. You guys are. Up here, um, all right, so I'm going to hit full screen or present mode. And again, Lucy, if you can just kind of confirm that um, on your side, do you see a beautiful picture of the, the Coliseum on your screen? Yes, a stunning picture. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, don't get hurt on all of this. I want to go all the way around. Um, yeah, you can start. Oh, this is the camera right here. All right. All right. Um, all right. So uh, we took a, a more connected approach to the history with our, our makerspace. So um, when we when we saw that we wanted to connect this to uh, the Roman Empire, we were thinking that first in history class this would actually be taught, and then you would use the makerspace as a way to revisit that topic and then explore it more. Um, so our objectives were to think about time and space and how events in Roman history and the places in Roman history, what, what was the design thinking of, of that era, in a sense? Yeah, and our objective is to uh, allow students to learn the history of ancient Rome, its architecture, and its relevancy to today's world architecture. So it's kind of like bridging the history part and also the learning defining part. And we want this lesson to be collaborative, hands-on, and innovative. Um, so some of our guiding questions were, what do we already know about the Roman Empire? So going back to the history class connection, um, why do we need to know, why do we know about it? So one of the topics we discussed was the importance of why we are doing it in the first place. Why do we want to revisit these topics? Why do we want to look at the uh, design elements of different structures in this, in this era? And why do we, what, what did these things actually mean in the grand context? of history and as well as humanity. Um, and in terms of skills, students will develop their storytelling, critical thinking, design thinking, and architectural appreciation skills, uh, and also critical thinking 
when they are reflecting on different structures and when they are connecting the history context into the design process. Um, so we have a pretty long recipe rec for the materials. If you guys, are they seeing the slides right now? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay, so these, this is more or less just what we would use as part of our uh, baker space. And also like the laser cutter, the 3D printing and like the sewing machines and also uh, look out um, tools and the students can We're getting a really strange um, echo. I just muted you um, for a second. There's some weird, like, repetitive throbbing sound. So about two slides ago, um, Wait, now you, I can hear you fine. Now you you're great. You don't like that? You're great. You're <laughs> totally fine. No, I don't. <laughs> Sorry. No, but um, your presentation was going great, but you, um, and, but then we kept on hearing this repetitive thing. We're good now. So keep going. Thanks. Play me. Do you, uh, should we start off from the beginning of the slide? Um, let me see. I just switched out of my, there's, now do I, when I change the, when I change my view here, do you guys see a different view than not from me? Because there's a way that I can, like right now you can see the video and your slides. Does that change uh, the view for you? No, you know, from our end, because we're also projecting the slides in full screen mode, we don't even see the, the zoom. Oh, good. Okay. Cause there's a, there are actually some cool views in this. Okay. We're good. I still, I see your slide on meeting number one. If you could go back like a couple slides, uh, like right here, that's perfect. That would be great. Uh, <laughs> do the, do the um, like express version. Yeah. 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 Express version. Oh, uh, so actually, um, you see the background picture is taken from a local uh, maker space. Um, so there are a lot of uh, basic materials students can utilize in this class, such as tapes and scissors. And also they can use the laser cutter, the 3D printer and sewing machines, as well as the logo um, tools to help them to um, prototype in the design process. Um, so we're actually going to move on just to yes. the next one after the second slide, the meeting one slide. Um, so for meeting one, so this will be a four class process, right? And the idea was originally this will, the historical topic will be taught in history class of the Roman Empire will be taught. And then afterward we would be revisited in the makerspace. Um, so when this was taught in the history class, that's when we believe that the empathizing part of the design cycle would start. Uh, so once it actually start, once we take over in the makerspace, that's when we can allow ourselves to break the kids into four to five different groups, and they can choose their own time period or uh, structures that they want to explore, uh, like the Coliseum, the aqueducts, the amphitheater, etc. And 
that's when they get to define what they actually want to explore in that uh, for their for their group project. Um, so afterwards, the groups would, would form, and then they would start to discuss what they consider important to the, to their design, and they start doing their research. That would be the EDA part, uh, and then they can actually start putting a design together, which is the prototype part. Of the design. And for meetings, uh, meeting two. Uh, one of our group members came up with a really cool idea is to use different software um, software systems to help students to develop the scenarios, such as using Scratch or PowerPoint or video to help students to, to develop the story in the event. And students can actually um, mimic characters' movement and communication in different scenarios within the different um, selected um, historical periods. Um, so class three is a lot more, this is where things get a lot more hands-on. The students start making their, their projects through, through laser cutting, through 3D printing. Um, so this is more or less just where get, they start working on it. This is the construction phase. Yeah. And for the last part, they will do the group presentation and they will role play different historical storytelling. And each group will also present their storyboard created by different software system. And students will also be encouraged to talk about what they found easy and difficult in the design thinking process. This is basically our presentation. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, okay, so a couple of my um, my initial thoughts on this, and I'll give my my students a second here to to gather their thoughts. Um, I liked at the at the beginning that you used cutting questions. It seemed a little bit of um, UBD going on there. So. Um, I'm glad that you that you're building into people's um, it, it, your prior knowledge and, and that sort of thing. I think that's really important to get the kids think, you know, thinking where those guiding questions, where the big questions, essential questions we want to answer. So I think that's a good way to start out your plan. Um, I also liked how they had some choice in what they were doing, including in the use of tools within the project. So I think that's something for all the projects to consider is where can you build in choice so that it, um, I don't think choice has to take up a lot of time or derail a project, I think you, you don't give them full, you don't give students a serious, particularly fourth or fifth grade students, you don't give them um, free reign of the choice because they'll take forever to come up with it. But if you give them, you know, uh, a, you know, a set of choices so that they, they have some um, empowerment in the situation, I think that's good as well. Um, and then there is another thing that there was something else I'd like to, but um, I'll defer to my students here. Brianna, Said that she liked um, she liked the grab of, she liked the humor that was built into this. That it's important to appeal to the the age of the students that you're working with, and um, and so thinking about and, and Don and I talk about this a lot too. Like, what's the inspiration? How are you going to whether it's, we're working with teachers or with students? How are you going to inspire people to do whatever you're hoping that they're going to do? And so I think humor is one way to reach kids and thinking about what it looks like from their perspective. And as you have probably been talking a lot with Rashawn and Don, you know, you know, design thinking is user centered design is user centered. Um, and I thought there was a lot of kind of attention to what it would be like as from a kid's perspective to, to work on this project in your particular presentation. Um, Matt asked if there's any kind of competitive let me pull out my window here. Competitive aspect between the groups. Is there, is it, is there any kind of competition between the kids or, or is it just kind of everybody working at their own pace and, and that sort of thing? I think for us there wasn't a competitive aspect. What it was is like there was more feedback loop from groups to each other of like they picked different projects and how can they critically look at each other's designs and improve on them? And how to do that. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, and I think I, I'm not sure if I would put competition into this unless it was. I, I mean, I think it, I think that I don't think competition is every kid's cup of tea, and um, and if this and again, it's not going it, to competition. Kind of, um, I think, kind of kills collaboration too. So if you're wanting the kids to give each other feedback and and work together and and 
uh, appreciate each other's projects. I'm not sure if, if anything competitive would, would help. Um, uh, and Matt works at a boys' school where I guess competition is a big thing. So, so I can see that. Um, any other, anybody other feedback for this group? I would love to hear from my students. Can you guys uh, uh, quickly add a few notes here or add them to our document? I'll take a look at our document for a second and then we we'll probably should get to the next group because they have very limited time. Anybody else? Well, I mean, I really like how your group wraps everything around the design framework. I mean, mm -hmm. I made it like very clear, and, like all the pieces connected very nicely. At the place. So you're teaching a couple of things at once. You're not just teaching the content, but you're also teaching the process. And I think, you know, what I found, and, and this is thanks to Don for hanging out with Don a lot, is, is that design thinking can be applied to any age, really. And I think it's great when kids actually get to experience it as well. Um, Irene has added that she especially loves the choices of tools for creating. Um, and I think it's kind of cool to use, I'm piggybacking on that, to use Scratch as a way of, as a presentation tool too. Uh, and then Brianna likes the self-evaluation piece. What was easy, what was hard. That was a really good way to, to frame it, she says. Okay, great. And I'll use students, if you want to add more feedback in the document, uh, go for it. And we'll, we'll keep moving on. Thanks, guys. Good job. Yeah. Um, I'm getting a close up view of like Rashawn's eyeball. Well, I was like, <laughs> my, my computer is projected on the screen. Yeah. And uh, Eddie, one of the students, had emailed their slide deck. But like, I didn't want my whole email inbox to be exposed, so I was like... Sorry. That was my strategy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so let me, uh, I'm going to switch over here to, uh, kind of, to the PDF. So uh, I have to figure out how to get to, I'll just create like a drive link later, because this is a PDF. So I should do it again. Google Slides, and I'll add it to your classic doc uh, while, I'm, uh, while, while they're going. So let me uh, see if this works. Yeah. Here, screen, um, and uh, yeah, you guys could actually. They're seeing what we were seeing. Right? Uh, they're just seeing this window. So they do see the, the thumbnails on the side, but if you, they're, I mean, your view probably presents nice and clean because they just see preview. They don't see my whole page. That's not okay. Um, uh, but I think you can just use the down arrow to navigate. All right? Yeah. Great. Hi, class. Okay, so <laughs> we are ready. We're going to give it a go. Uh, we are the third group, and our the title for our course design is Understanding by Building. And uh, I'm Eddie, and with me are Xiaoxu, Yuka, and Kathy. Uh, Abby, unfortunately, is not here with us today. She's attending. Conference. She's actually with you, Lucy. That's right. Okay, so. Okay, so before we get into the details, I want to give you the big picture, like the big idea about our thinking, like our, our idea about the whole thing. So uh, our understanding by building, uh, there's like uh, two meaning and two major components in it. Uh, first of all, by building, we encourage and we will help students uh, to build Rome, Roman architecture. So by building that, we want students to learn how to use uh, different maker tools and uh, so that they can become makers that are good at using that maker tools. And uh, prototype, advance, and eventually finalize and present your products. Um, and the second level of this understanding by building is through building that we, we propose five aspects that uh, we hope that students will weave in their design and their building projects. And those five aspects are physics, engineering, aesthetics, culture, and social factors. So that is to say that uh, on the surface that we as designers or course instructors, we will help and encourage students to build different Roman architecture. But behind it, the deeper meaning is that through this building project that 
uh, we will help students uh, motivate students to expo explore these five different aspects as they are building their respective projects. So, so there are four weeks, uh, four weeks of work. Uh, I'm going to talk about week one, and the goals for week one are understand, brainstorm, and prototype. So ideally, we as uh, course instructors, we will give like a brief introduction about the course structure uh, for four different weeks, and then we will touch upon Roman history, culture, and just the basic idea. And then we would like to like describe the project scope, workflow, how do students work with each other and help each other, and then sort of um, just explain the five different aspects. Uh, they don't have to cover all five aspects, but they are encouraged to do, to do so. And also kind of uh, give them and give students an orientation about the different maker tools in the lab. And then uh, we will, in the first week that we Ideas so they can continue to revise and then improve on their ideas later. All right, I'm gonna switch. How do I? All right, do you want to do week two? Okay, and uh, for week two, okay. Our okay. students will make in progress uh, toward week two based on the prototype they've already made on week one, but they will be integrating uh, more advanced tools to build the uh, Roman architecture, and that's why we're providing the maker space for us. Okay. And based on, the, uh, based on what they're building, uh, we not only want them to build it out, but we also want them to understand uh, why is it for. So uh, they're gonna do some research and uh, think about the rationale behind the architecture and discuss in group to find out uh, discuss in group to find out about their reading, uh, about the findings. And uh, we, we also want the students to be more creative and innovative. So uh, based upon their understanding about those architectures, they might be able to do more uh, modification and adjustment to see whether it worked or not. And the teachers and instructors will, will help with them to uh, about the group findings and work progress. Um, and week three would be a um, continuation of from week two. So probably students, uh, after um, building the prototype, students may find it, find some error in the how they've been building the things. So they may not, things may not go as they thought it would. So they will keep trying the trying and error and think of uh, ideas to make things work and then they will revise and finalize their pro um, their project and they will they should start at, at this point they should start think about how they how they're going to present to the class and then develop their ideas and yeah get ready for the for the pitch mm -hmm. So for the week four uh, would be so just a little bit since the first week we have already have the brainstorm and then we have the continuity based prototyping and then the last week would be major focus on the reflection and analysis and a certain showcase for the students. So during that week four, as you see on the presentation, the students will really to show their findings, but also we would like to create a how-to book. And it's just really guiding the, among the students to create this book, to guiding others in the way to either reflection and group opinion and a sharing. So the last piece for the presentation is assessment, which is a rubric. Since our understand, our big question is understanding by building. So one of the critical piece for the makerspace is how you make sure the students really get the big ideas and how we possibly to assess the students in a different way. So we quickly list a certain key words. For instance, as the brainstorm, at the beginning, the students will identify a certain key questions they can ask and then they can to picture 
pictures of the few sessions. They can document the whole procedures. That would be something we think they understand well the certain points. As a prototyping stage, we're thinking the students can either create a model or they can create a blueprint of the model. Depending on the quality, we will think partially the students can get the certain senses of what we are looking for. As a reflection analysis piece, it's a little bit abstract. The part of what we are trying to assess is whether the students can explain the ideas and create a certain inventor's document or a guidebook in the way to show the people or show other peers they understand. So at the showcase stage, it's really, we want the students to document the whole stage as a digital book. And then at the reflection piece, it's shared with the peers. So as a part of the assessment. Yeah, that is it. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to. So uh, anyway, I, I was just, uh, I will. Oh, you can move the window over. <laughs> All right. So just. A super brief conclusion that I we want to give our punchline that uh, we thought about this idea just because we are talking about Rome or Roman architecture uh, doesn't mean that we have to do what the Romans do so we kind of through this project I feel through building and by building we hope to expand the learning scope or you know the, the subjects um, of like Roman history and uh, also kind of like uh, planning the constructionism spirits like just have students uh, help each other and learn from each other and tinker with each other so but we are very excited about hearing your suggestions and comments excellent that's great guys thank you um we got, i think we're just getting warmed up with the feedback because now the ideas are flowing from my students so maybe <laughs> I, I maybe i need to warm them up before we we do this again um, so lots and lots and lots of good feedback here. I don't know if you can see all the comments, but um, um, starting with Irene at about 521, uh, she likes your five aspects, and there's Rashawn's eyeball again. <laughs> and I'm sorry. It's, no, it's funny. It's cracking me up. It defines the purpose and connection. Um, I liked how you uh, wanted the students to innovate and improve upon the original architecture. Like, I think it's interesting to look at it like, yeah, this is great architecture and it was really uh, innovative for its time, but what else could we do to it? Like it's not, it, I, th I think that's, it's not just, it's not just, um, you know, I think we want to kind of avoid having kids do, I don't know, back in the day when I was in school, we would do like dioramas and, and we, we would, I remember doing a social studies project where I built a pagoda, but it was, there wasn't any substance to it. There wasn't any measuring, there wasn't, and at least I remember, there wasn't any context that we you know with the report or anything like that it was just we built this thing and when you're asking them um you know so so i think asking them to to kind of redefine what's been great in our history is really kind of an interesting angle um and brianna kind of echoed that with the the focus on why um and then before you got to the end of your project i said i wish i wish all these projects had a public component and like, how are you sharing what your kids are doing with the world or with the community that you're working in? I think that's a big part of 21st century teaching and learning. And, um, and often, it, I, think it, I think it escapes people's attention because it, it, schools are so siloed. Um, people aren't thinking about how we can do that all the time. And, and so you, you know, virtually you can do, you know, have some sort of gallery of your projects or you could invite uh, people in for, you know, an exhibition, whatever it is. But I think the public component is important. So I was glad to see at the end that you guys included, a sh you know, showcasing um, the work. Um, Matt thought the trial and error was great and, and invited risk taking. Um, the other piece that I haven't, that I don't think we've seen in the project yet is, is how, would, how would students work with experts somehow to inform their projects? So you could use technology to, to connect with an engineer or with some sort of scientist or whomever, whatever it is, to kind of, you know, give, give kids feedback to and, and share their work maybe. That might be an additional, you know, the beauty of technology is that it can bring, it can bring the world into your classroom. How are you making that happen? Um, we like that you, I think everybody was in agreement, we like that you had a rubric because, you know, back to the first project, how do we, you know, how do we, who, you, the first group, 
you know, um, pose the question of, of how do we how do we assess these kinds of projects? And I think that's really important um, in this day and age that's so where we're so fixated on test scores. Um, and so a rubric, and I think I think we probably would all agree here that we'd like to see a little bit more development with the rubric in terms of what are those standards are that you refer to, like you know, and and that probably would take a lot of time, but um, but that we're, we were happy to see that. Um, Brianna thought again the digital documentation of a blog or a vlog to document the process would be great. Um, I loved your tagline; that was awesome, and. Um, and then uh, Kelly, who just who said reaching out to others is so important and gives other people a chance to learn from your work. So um, just that's a little bit of the feedback I have and, and, and what my students had to say. Anything else, anyone? Do you want to weigh in? Does anybody want to grab the mic and say something, actually, instead of typing? I know. I wish, the, I wish my students would, uh, would uh, let themselves be seen, but they're all, like, just getting home from work and I think are – probably on the couch with their feet up while they're listening to us, I'm guessing. Uh, that, that's where we provided this multi, uh, multimodal experience. Yes, yeah, yeah, you guys, uh, you guys uh, have to meet face-to-face, uh, -face. poor you. No, I'm kidding. I actually think there's something to be said about meeting face-to-face -face versus virtual. I'm not sure if I'm sold on, on, on the whole online thing yet, but it's, um, I think it's a combination of both. Uh, and yes, I did meet two of my students at, at our state tech conference last week, so that, that really helped. Um, do we have another presentation or is that it? Are we yeah, we've good? Got one, one more. Okay. All right. Go for it. I'll shut up and you guys can Thanks. go for it. Thank Great. you. So this, this is the, the one that's a, a pivot as far as topic, um, because it's, again, it's another one of the areas of school and ed tech life. Um, and this is, this is about the, the, the various systems that students and teachers and faculty and staff are, are called to. Uh, as part of their school life, it was a topic we explored last week. Um, you know, we, we we created maps of you know all of the district different systems that we individually, uh, either uh, personally or after professionally, engage with, whether it's social media or learning management systems, etc. Um, so this is is this picking option two that was in the in the case? Yeah, in the case right. Okay, awesome. Okay, great. Thanks. Break a leg. Here we go. Um, so I'm going to go to, oh, I have to go to your presentation. So we chose infographics, so this is just a PDF. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to do share screen and then I'm going to switch to full screen. Um, sorry, I did the previous screen. Um, is that, is that visible to you, Lucy? Can you visually confirm, uh, verbally confirm? Yes, yes, it looks great. Awesome. Okay, so just to kind of refresh on what our task or prompt was, um, we were asked to present to the head of TC like what the typical student, what they have to navigate when um, I guess starting at TC and or being at TC in general. Um, so we all kind of talked about it, but we wanted to ask the whole class if like you guys struggled at any point with your online interactivity with TC? I okay. still do. I still <laughs> do. <laughs> Before you got here or when you ended the even last semester? Yeah. So basically we asked ourselves uh, what's wrong and our answer was basically everything. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to take ourselves back to the time where we just got admitted and we want to imagine what can be fixed, what can be better. And so this is basically what, what we came up with. So instead of a admitting, uh, admitted student, student letter, um, a uh, infographic like this can be very helpful. Um, and we also understand that this, uh, the TC portal is probably something that the first thing you learn before you learn anything else, before you take any classes, before you, um, you, you, you get to uh, know any teachers. This is something you, the first thing you learn from Columbia University. So, so this, this experience is quite important in our perspective. And, and, and we break it down to about five different categories. Um, Carol? Okay, yes. Um, when we discussed this, uh, we were re remind, or we will remember what happened when we get accepted. And they, they told you by an email, 
okay? This, you, you have to create your uni. This is your uni. Now figure it out by yourself. And you are very lost. Where to start, where to go, which classes I want to take. Uh, so we create this. You have been accepted at Teachers College. Now, what is next? So this is illustrative. It, do not have, it doesn't have too much text. Uh, and this is an interactive PDF. So explore the courses you want to take. Before registration, you should know more about each course and professor. To map all the courses available, you can go here. And if you press, oh, I don't know what happened. Well, uh, it, it opened a window in Safari. That's yeah. Fine. Can, can you see it or no? Um, yeah, let me figure that out. <laughs> well, the cool thing is it also works well on the phone, like the shape of the infographic. And so you can just do in there. It's interactive. And it's just a PDF. But it's pretty cool. OK. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to switch to a full desktop chair, so one second. Okay. Because this is so cool. The thing is, here is too much information, information turning around us, and it's disorganized. You do not know where to go. So this could give you order. So you can know that in the same place, you can find information about the person, the professor, and how to, to register classes, what to do about your health insurance, this all overwhelming information is in an only one place and in an organized way. So for instance, uh, the registration process is through my, port, my PC portal over the option add or drop classes. Here is a short and friendly video that will help you uh, re registering your courses. If you click here, oh, we do not have the Adobe Flash uh, player, but it actually exists a video who help you to register uh, courses. And we were talking, how many of you actually knew that it was a video provided from teachers college that helped you? We figured yeah. figure it out, but <laughs> they might well, 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 just one from this old class. Um, well, there is exist. The, the information is there, but we, we don't know how to find it. So statistically, less than 5% and of the students know that this tutorial exists. Yes. <laughs> That's really bad. And we want to make this awareness, uh, to create this awareness. Yes. And that was a full tutorial to teach you how to um, register. That register. Was, yeah, yes. register class. Well, and if you keep going down, this information about housing and the links, tuition and the bursar office, health insurance. So it's an, an organized way to to get the information in and so what? We kind of created, we, we kind of use our own uh, customer journey map that, um, and, and we kind of build our content based on that. And, and after we're done with this, we can go to the next. Page. So everything above you can find on a TC portal and that is like before you actually come to campus. You, was that you are supposed to know everything about and after you got like a better sense of what's happening so you just realize there's so much more than just my tc portal and if my tc is only a part of the whole tc teacher space apart from that you so we have the whole tc google space mostly you will be using email uh, and everything else linked to your TC Gmail uh, account, like Drive. You uh, probably you will share files and everything with your classmates or teachers, professors here. And also, there are learning management systems. Once you are registered as classes, so here at TC we have different. Um, so every different class we might have different learning system. <laughs> so, and yeah, and we are yeah, we're going to talk about that in detail in the next. And then there are TC's social network system, the TC Vera like Facebook, I think, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts that you can follow. Then they have like information on there, then but and also TC home 
page. That's what we have in, um, in mind that mostly what's a TC digital space may look like. And so ideally those parts should be like quick. Well, if you just click like Facebook icon, you can go to it. But like we didn't get that. Get that. Um, so just for example, if you click on learning management system, that part, you have a more detailed and uh, in instruction about that. So in this one that we have, this have we all agreed that it was very confusing that all of our information for our classes was stored on this separate app uh, that we didn't really know about. So for example, if say one of our classes was linked onto Google Classroom, there was already readings up there and everything, and we didn't even know how to get into it. So that was one of the confusing parts. So this piece explains that these learning management systems um, are a place where you can get class materials, upload assignments, communicate, get grades, and so much more. So the purpose of this is to just give you the name and the icon so you can just get familiar with it because we want our goal is to not stress people out anymore, but just to let them get their foot in the water a little bit quicker. So that's Canvas, that's one. We actually use that in this class. Moodle, Blackboard, Schoology, um, and there are more, but those are four that TC use that we know of. Um, so this really, again, is to just make a very clear, simple information pamphlet for new students to help them de-stress and be prepared for their first step into TC. Mm -hmm. And, and just, a, uh, just a creative idea, um, we can use a blank space on, on this, uh, this diagram here to, to put down, uh, to, to have a list of schools that, I, I mean, of classes that actually uses the platform. For example, uh, Canvas, you can put down the, the course name of this class on here. And if I am a new student, and after I register for, you know, if I, if I have some classes that I think that that might be fun, I would know that, hey, this class uses Canvas, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that can be very helpful to, to students who are new. It's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Send it to the TC admissions and <laughs> IT office. They don't like designers at TC. <laughs> so we have a we have a few questions. So really, you guys have all those learning management systems going on. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh my gosh! One of our students that joined us, uh, Anthony, he works for National Lewis University, doing um, is a, a tech integrator with the faculty and that sort of thing. So I'm sure he's totally like commiserating with you guys right now, um, and and probably maybe he'll have some feedback for you too in terms of what works and what doesn't work with what he's noticed with students at, at NLU. Um, so here's one thing that I had in mind. I, th I think yeah, as I have a kid who's going to college next year and just the whole registration, financial aid, uh, getting in, obviously, all that stuff is really like the timeline since I went to college has all kind of like morphed and um, it's very nebulous to me and they want high school kids to take ownership of the process, not the parents to, to oversee everything. So any kind of tool that you can develop like this. Uh, even if for graduate students, I think is really, really helpful. Anything that's visual, I think, is much better than anything text-based or super text-heavy. Um, so I think that's important. One thing that occurred to me that I often talk to schools about um, is paying attention to, uh, and, and I bet Rashawn has some ideas on this too, on to the data that's generated from, from um, people using certain things. So for instance, if a website has some sort of like a um, metric tool built in like uh, Google Analytics, seeing what web pages or links are popular or not popular, um, I think can give you an idea of whether it's a good user experience or not. So for instance, you guys mentioned a video that, that people that should, should watch on the on, on teacher, Teachers College webpage. I really, it would be interesting to look at that video if it's in YouTube and see how many people have watched it. You know, if you, if you have 200 people watching it in a school like at, at, at TC, it's probably not very popular or useful. Like I think, there, I think those kind of, that kind of data can kind of inform 
the design of things if you if if you have access to that kind of thing. Um, and then for me personally, I the other piece. Oh, and here's another thing I, I wrote in my notes here. Um, I would also do some research. Like, I don't know if you guys did any research before you, you created these infographics, you know, either interviewing people or, or whatever to kind of figure out what the pain points are for people. Did you guys do any research like that? Well, I guess they, they could tap each other. <laughs> okay. okay. And, yes, we share our own experiences. But... Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess ideally you would want to ask other people, you know, just to get a to get a little bit of variety in there. Um, and then the other thing, what did I say? I know I said something in here. Oh, you know what I would use with this is uh, there's a tool called ThingLink. I don't know if any of you have used it, uh, like T H I N G L I N K, and it lets you put hotspots on images. So, for instance, I I've done. Um, in a YouTube workshop I did last week, I've taken screenshots of like my YouTube homepage and put little hotspots of like um, on, the, on the place where you, or my playlists are, I link to a video in YouTube that you kind of mouse over and it pops up that is a tutorial on how to make playlists. So I can take a look at the website, but like you can make hotspots and make this more interactive. Like I think to me, it's not interactive if it just has links. You know, plain old links are kind of boring and whatever. It's like a document, right? But like you could really make this that these infographics pop a little bit more if you added that. Just one thought. Um, hey, Lucy, and that yeah. About one more minute here. Cause we're okay. Gonna... Okay. Because you, you have to go to your next class. All right. There's other feedback in the chat here, um, and so I'm I'm trying to think if there's anything in here uh, that is particularly compelling. Um, blah 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 blah. Oh, Kelly had a question. Um, so your your professors are not required to use one specific tool for to share information. You can use whatever they want. No, no. I, I can speak to that. That TC is trying to make an effort now to because th there is a new like a uh, IT director who is trying to work closely with you know program uh, towards getting people all towards Canvas, but uh, it's slow. It's slow going. Okay, and then Anthony, I said it would be nice to that if if each LMS title linked to further resources. Again, you could use thing link for that. That could be provide more info without cluttering the infographic. And then Matt suggested a survey and, um, you know, to get more feedback, I guess, and more data from people. And then Kelly is like, is expressing her hopes that one day you'll have your own uh, one LLMS. And uh, so we sympathize with you guys. Anyway, this has been really fun. Um, I hope you found it valuable. And hopefully uh, Don and Rashawn and I will, will collaborate on this and refine it further so it's a little bit more useful. But this was totally awesome. And we're so glad yeah. to have met you. And, um, uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll collaborate again. Um, this was recorded. And I'll stick it up in YouTube. And uh, if you have any problems with that, let me know. And I won't do that. Um, just let me know. Uh, or let Don and Rashawn know. And, and Lucy, can we archive the chat so we can look back at the feedback? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do that too. So you can go to, you guys go and do what you need to do, and I'll take care of that and send it to you. I'll send you all the stuff down in Rashawn. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm going to turn them off, or hopefully they'll turn themselves off. Uh, to my students who are still in the room, uh, I'm in Texas at the South by Southwest conference, and I'm coming home Thursday night. So more stuff coming from me. Um, and uh, thank you guys for all coming. I know that this is a big imposition when you have other things going on, um, but it was fabulous to have as many of you here as, as who can make it. These webinars have been really valuable and a good time for us to bond and that sort of thing. So thank you everybody for making, um, for making this webinar. I really appreciate it. The next one is not required, but I would love you to come. I believe it's John Carippo from Q, which is, um, the ISTE affiliate of California, and he's phenomenal. And then my friend Andrew Gardner, who is director of professional learning. Um, um, uh, Andrew is the, is the director of professional learning for BrainPop, and he's developed their program from scratch, and he's awesome, and he'll be presenting to us, uh, I think, at the next one. And then our final one will be required, and, and I'll get into that a little bit more in the next couple weeks. Um, so, um, you guys are awesome. Thanks for coming. Have a good night. And this is a little bit shorter than our usual ones, which I think you guys will probably be glad about. And, uh, and I'll see you next week. More stuff coming from me, though, in the next couple of days. Take care, everyone. Thanks.